What's up guys, Deadbird here. In this episode, I'm going to teach you guys how to trigger uh, an event on certain lines of dialogue. So let's say you're talking to an NPC and on uh, line 3 or something, uh, something happens, like a slime appears. And uh, without further ado, I'll show you guys how to do that. Alright, so I have a test NPC here, and a little test little slime here. And I'm going to add some lines of dialogue to this character. So I'm just going to hit create, and then I'm going to name this dialogue trigger. And the reason why I'm separating it from the test NPC is because when I add the dialogue trigger, I can then change the position of the trigger. So I don't want it to be exactly centered on the character. I'm going to make this a one. And I'm going to make this a little bit down so that you can be uh, over here, maybe even smaller than that, like uh, 0.75. So if it was centered like this, um, there's not enough room, so I can move it down just a bit by separating the two. All right, so I'm going to add the, th the these four lines of dialogue here. And I'm just going to click and drag them over. And I'm going to click on the next dialog on Interact. And what that does is we go here on our dialog trigger. Um, if you don't have this, it's pretty simple. All it does is we have the dialog. Uh, next dialog on Interact is true. Then we are simply going to increase the index. And then we're going to play that line of dialog. And let's just make sure that the uh, we don't go out of bounds. Uh, I didn't realize this, but we can just simply put the dialog manager instance in Q dialog right here, and let's just add a space, uh, clear it up a little bit, and then we can delete this, and then because of that, we no longer need this part. So we can get rid of that, and we can. And this will work exactly the same, but it'll help us uh, later on. If we don't have next dialog on interact is true, then this never gets called. And so <laughs> to simply counteract that, uh, we'll just say else. And we'll just copy this, paste that in. And so now if we have, because you know, you're not going to have next dialog on interact be true all the time. And so if it's false, um, it'll now call the NQ dialog. So to show what that looks like, I'm going to hit play. And then I'm going to go over to my test NPC here. And then she says, hey, how you doing? And then she says, there's a magic slime that's going to appear. There he is. I'll do something about it. And then she says, I'll make him disappear after this line of dialogue. And then she says, that's it, you can leave. And then that's, she's just going to keep saying that. That's it, you can leave. Obviously, no slime appeared, nothing happened. And I'll show you guys how to do that now. All right, so I'm going to open up my dialogue manager. And we're going to create a delegate, which will help us understand uh, what line we're on. And if we're on that line, we do something. So let's do a public delegate void. And let's call this on dialog line callback. And we're going to be passing through a integer. We'll call this uh, line. Well, maybe just call it dialog line. Line is kind of ambiguous. Dialog line. And then we are going to create a public on dialog line callback, and then we're just going to call it on dialog line callback. All right, so we have this established now. OK, so the next part we need to do is we need to keep track of which line of dialog we are on. Because currently, we, can, we don't have any way of tracking that. So I want to track that is I'm going to create a private integer and call this total line count. So we're going to keep track of how many lines we have in our dialog or our queue here, our dialog info queue. Um, so we're going to track how many lines there are. 
and we're going to put it uh, around here. It's just somewhere in the NQ dialog, doesn't really matter where. Um, as long as it's after this line here, that's important. So we're going to say total line count is equal to dialog info dot count. And then we are going to go down over here. So we're going to want to have our, so we're going to want to invoke our delegate here. So this is going to keep track of what line we're on. And if we're on a specific line, we're going to invoke whatever method that we attach to this. And that, this sounds a little bit complicated, but I'll uh, clear this up later so you don't have to worry about this too much. We're just going to go down here and say if on dialog line callback is not equal to null. So pretty much like this is going to be loaded with uh, methods. And if there is a method inside of here, aka it's not empty, we're going to invoke it. And it's going to want an integer because we're passing through an integer and it's going to want what line of dialogue we're on. And so how do we know what line of dialogue we're on? Well, we can use the our total amount of dialogue that we have here and subtract it with how many lines of dialogue are left. So the reason why we put it below the dialogue DQ is because the DQ is going to subtract the amount of dialogues by one so that we actually know how many lines of dialogue dialogues that, that there are. And so now we say total line count minus dialogue info dot count and this will give you what line we're on. And so that we can now move on to the next part where we actually add methods to our on dialogue line callback. So guys, I made a pretty dire error, and it's that when we go to our dialogue manager and look at our total line count, um, we have to put this after we add, after we enqueue all the lines of dialogue, because or else this will always be zero. So after we enqueue all the dialogue, then we get the total count, and it'll accurately track what line we're on. All right, so in our dialog scripts folder, I'm gonna create a new script and call this dialog event. And then I'm going to open this up. So here I have my dialog event and I'm just gonna delete all this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is going to create a bracket. And I'm going to require component type of dialog trigger. This is because I don't want this um, script to exist unless the dialog trigger script also exists with it because we're going to be using the dialog trigger. All right, so next we're going to need two public integers. We're going to call this, uh, we're going to say the line. I'll just say dialog line. Hmm, yeah dialog line and then a public integer call this dialog index. I guess the better version is target the target line and then the target index. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is going to add a public unity event and when I type unity event, it's not going to have anything, so I'm going to hit alt enter. And then we're going to be using unity events, uh, unity engine dot events here. Just hit enter again, and it'll add it at the top. And I'll just call this um, our. Let's just call this event. Actually, we can't do that. We'll just call this unity event. There you go. And so this is what is going to happen when we are on our target line and our target index. And by target index, what I'm referring to is that if we look over to our dialog trigger or our Go to your NPC, and then go to your dialog trigger, and the index is these elements here. We need to know what element we want to be on, 
so that we don't accidentally trigger some sort of event on the wrong index. All right, so let's add our dialog event. And so this is what's going to look like. And so you're going to have to manually type what index you want and what line you want. So let's say I want something to happen on line two, or that index two. I just type two, and then what line I want it to happen on, just type one. So that's what the process is going to be like. And then I can add the event that I want to happen. But right now, that doesn't work. And so how do we get it to work? All right, so we're going to add a couple of things. We're going to need access to our dialog trigger. Let's say private dialog trigger. Uh, dialog trigger. And the reason why I'm making it private uh, is because we already know that the dialog event is going to have to be on an object with the dialog trigger here. So because of this, um, we can do this. And then we can do start. So when the game starts, we're going to set the dialog trigger equal to get component. And we're going to get component the dialog trigger. So this will always work because, as I said, the dialog event is going to be on a object with dialog trigger. So the next part is we're not going to be using mono behavior. We're going to be deriving from interactable because every time we interact with the object, so let's say public override void interact, we're going to want to know if we are on the right index. So if the dialog trigger dot index is equal to our target index, we're going to want to do something. All right, so the next step is we're going to create a public void. And we'll call this generic event. So this is what's going to happen when we reach the target index and the target line. So we're going to be adding this to the dialog manager callback. But uh, this thing is going to need a integer be passed through the parameter. And I'll show you what happens if we don't do that. So let's go to our dialog manager instance dot on dialog line callback. And we're going to be adding the generic event here. And it's going to complain because it says that we don't, uh, it doesn't match the delegate, meaning uh, the delegate has a integer being passed through it. And this one doesn't. And so simply just pass through a line. And um, it will now accept that. So now we need to make sure that if the line is equal to the target line, or target, uh, no, not, not index line, then we can do something. And we're going to simply invoke our Unity event. Interact range should be the exact same as the dialog trigger range. So let's go to the start and let's say interact range is equal to dialog trigger dot interact range. All right, another thing we need to do real quick is we need to also have a Boolean called this has added. So once we've added the um, generic event, we don't want to do that anymore. So we're just going to say when we do add it, say has added is equal to true. And if we have, if we already added it, then we'll just say if has added is true, then we just simply return out of this interact function. So we need to actually remove the generic event after we call it. So let's go to our dialog manager instance dot on dialog callback we're just going to want to remove the generic event just like that so that we don't uh, always <laughs> invoke this uh, generic event every time we get to a certain line of dialog we need to make sure that we're also or that we're not in a dialog currently because this might, uh, while we're talking to him, the index increases, then we might 
accidentally in add a, a generic event that we don't want to add. So make sure that uh, we are not also in a dialog. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how we can use this dialog event. And by going through this story or these lines of dialog, she's just going to say, hey, how you doing? And on the first index, she's going to say there's a slime that's going to appear. There he is. I'll do something about it. And so on index number one, line two, we're going to spawn a slime. And then she says, I'll make him disappear after this line of dialogue. We'll just add one more and say, ta-da, he's gone. And then um, she just says that's it, you can leave, so we don't need anything after that. So I'll just delete this and show you how to do it from scratch. Um, we're going to have a dialogue event. And we're going to just set the interact range to zero. And I have a little target info here. Um, all I did was add a header called target info in our dialogue event, just so that we have this uh, information separated from the interact range. And so as I said, the first index here, line two, when she says, hey, there he is, we're going to spawn a slime. So first index, line two, and this should probably be swapped actually. Let's just swap them real quick. Um, so that it's just a little bit more intuitive to set the index first and then the line. And um, now that we have the index first, line second, a little bit easier to read. And then we're going to add a unity event and we're going to add our test enemy. So we're going to make his sprite renderer turn off. I'll make him a little bigger first, just so we can clearly see this guy appear. Maybe a little too big. And then we're going to turn his sprite renderer off because we're going to want to spawn him by activating his sprite renderer. So we're going to say bool enabled true. And then the next part is that she's going to make him disappear. So on the, let's add another dialogue event. And on the second uh, index here, she's going to make him disappear after this line of dialogue. So we're going to say on the second target index, on line two here, we are going to make him disappear. So let's go back to our dialogue trigger, our dialog event. So line two, we're going to add the test enemy again, and then we're going to set his sprite renderer to uh, false. So let's uh, just make the zero real quick, just so that it's not in our way. So I'm going to go over to our test NPC, and she's going to say, hey, how you doing? And then she's going to say, a magic slime is going to appear. And then there he is, and so there's a slime. I'll do something about it. And then I'm going to talk to her again. She says, I'll make him disappear after this line of dialogue. And then, ta-da, he's gone. So now he's gone. And then she just says, that's it, you can leave now. So um, that's about it for this tutorial. And if you have suggestions, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. I'd like to just say thank you to my Patreons, Black Fox, Immersion, Kiri Joe, Mars, Pale Blue Dot, and Polybius. Thank you guys for becoming my patrons, for making this all possible, and I'll see you guys later.